Hey, welcome back to Cheaper Cheaper TV. I'm Dino, your host. Glad to see you here. In this week's episode, we're heading over to Home Depot to get some plywood to make our sleeping camping platform. Let's go. Okay, and here we are going into the Home Depot and there's the plywood for $43, 3 quarter inch standard plywood. If you get this, it does have some open knots and the edges look a little rough, but if you're just going to put a carpet on it or a pad or even paint it with Linex, but I chose to go for the premium sanded pine because it has a very nice already sanded surface and I have some ideas on how I want to finish that. So you take your plywood over to the saw and here at the Guelph Home Depot, a nice young man named Baden knew exactly what to do. He looked at the diagram and just went right to it. And he not only cut all of the large cuts for me, but he did every single cut for me, which basically did all the work I needed to do to have a camping platform. Baden observed me looking at some smaller pieces of plywood to do the cross support pieces that I needed and the one more cargo leg that I couldn't fit on the plywood diagram. So he showed me where they had some scrap pieces of three quarter inch standard plywood that I could get for a song. And since this is the Cheaper Jeeper TV show, I said, absolutely, I'll take that. And so there's Baden cutting the leg piece and then the five cross pieces for me. So we loaded up the cart, Baden gave me the slip, and I took it to the cash register, and the lady at the cash register graciously helped me out, and out the door I went, and I started loading all the wood into my Jeep. And here I am going back to the Jeep and removing all the wood at home so I could begin to form my camping platform. And as you see here are the cardboard stencils that I used in the design of the platform. So I'll take the pieces apart and I'll overlay them on the freshly cut plywood that I have so I can cut in all the notches that I need to cut out on the plywood. This diagram shows the drawing with all the measurements as a result of my work so you don't have to do a stencil. You can access the drawings on the website and you can just go off the measurements that I derived from using the stencils. And here's the second leg. And here I'm just measuring where the notch goes. Now this technique I use to punch where I'm going to drill holes at the corner of the notches because it's a little tight to get in there with a skill saw and a jigsaw. So with the holes there, I could use the skill saw to cut a line straight up to where the hole is and then I could finish that cut with a jigsaw and then just do the end of the notch going from hole to hole with the small blade of the jigsaw. Now this is the cross piece of the cargo area for which there are a few notches and grooves that I needed to trace from my template but you will get this drawing and you can pick it up from the website and so although I'm using the template to figure things out you have the finished drawing that you could work from. So here I am cutting it to length and now measuring where the notches go for the cargo legs to hook into. These notches are where the carpet in the cargo bay area interfere with the cross piece, so I just made a little notch to bypass those pieces of carpet. Here are the larger size notches that are for the cargo legs where they integrate with the cross piece. And now I'm measuring for all of those two inch notches where the support members go between this cross piece and the front cross piece. So there I am measuring the two inch depths and I'm punching where the drill holes will go.
After the skill saw, I just finished the job with the jigsaw. So there's the final product and of course the drawing is available to you on the website. So what we've just done are the two cargo legs and cross piece and now we're going to do the front cross piece. And here's the stencil on the table and I'll just put the piece of plywood that's cut underneath and trace out the notches that go around the headrests. Now this cut here is tricky where you have to take the skill saw blade and just lower it onto the line to be able to cut through the plywood because you're not approaching it on an edge. So you can see I lower the blade and I go as close to the line as possible and then I come back and go as close to the line in the other corner. And there I am doing it on this one. And once I've done that, I take the jigsaw and finish those corner cuts. There you go, there's the finished piece. And there's the diagram. What we have to do now is put those notches in the top. They're two inches deep, three quarter inch wide, so I'm using a piece of plywood to mark the three quarter inches and the ruler to mark the two inches of depth. There I am punching the holes for the drill. I use the skill saw to cut right up to the holes. And then the jigsaw to finish the cuts. And then when I'm done, I've got my five notches and my front cross piece all done. And these are the support pieces that go between the cargo cross piece and the front cross piece. So I'll just cut these to length. And I have all the pieces. The middle piece is a little shorter because of the center console. And now I'm going to cut the top pieces of the camping platform. Here is the cargo area and I have to cut out the notches for the latch mechanism and for the subwoofer. There is the final product and you can see all the measurements. This piece is for the pillow area or the pillow extension area. Here I am laying in the cargo cross piece and the two cargo legs and you can see how the pieces just integrate into each other and they just hold each other up. And there's the front cross piece up against the front seat and there's the cross support pieces being put into the notches and everything just holds together nicely. There's the cargo platform. And then here comes the 60% platform, which could be put in from the back, but I put it in from the door so you could see it better. And there's the 40% platform and there's the whole cargo area all assembled and intact. So here I am extending the support pieces to provide for the pillow extension piece. I'm doing it on this side so you can see. And then on the other side I could just do it and you could see from here that piece goes in place as well. Now to this measure from the back of the Jeep to there is 5 foot 11. 
but I notice when I pull the seat up as much as possible and tilt it forward that I've actually achieved an extra two inches. So technically the distance from the end of the pillow extension piece to the back of the Jeep is six foot one. So there we have the whole platform in place. This is showing that even with the seats there, that there is some room underneath the platform for storage. But if the seats were removed, there'd be a ton of room there. And here I am getting on top of the platform and it's just holding itself in place without any fasteners whatsoever because of all the notches integrating all the pieces of wood. Ah, boy, does that feel good. Now here we are showing the 60% platform in place with the 40% seat up and here's the 60% seat up with the 40% platform in place. So depending if you have extra people that you have to bring, you can have different percentages of the platform showing and the rest of it can remain on top of the cargo platform so that when you get to your location you can extend and use the whole platform. There's the whole rear seat up and all of the central part of the platform is sitting nice and flat on top of the cargo platform so that it's available to you when you get to your destination. So here I am showing there's the cargo platform and there's two layers of three quarter inch plywood of the middle section sitting on top and then finally the front cross piece. So that's the cheaper Jeeper TV camping sleeping platform for around 50 bucks, which gives you flexibility of plenty of storage and lots of comfort. Good job. Let's move on to this week's tip segment. Now for some cheaper Jeeper tips. Okay, last week we talked about this idea for ventilation in the Jeep when you're sleeping in it. It's a great idea, it really works well. The only problem is, what do you do if it's going to rain? You got to make sure you have a tarp over the Jeep, but are there other alternatives? There is one product sold in Germany, it's something like $70 or something American in shipping. That's a little spendy. So what else can we do? Well, there's this option. This is something I threw together using a soffit van I picked up at Home Depot. It was brown, I spray painted it black. It wasn't 17 and a half inches across, so I extended it with some pieces of aluminum that I screwed into the sides. And I install it similar to the other vent I showed you in our last episode. It works really well because the louvers keep the rain out. I was on a fishing trip that rained for five days straight, but the fishing was great, so we stuck around. And this kept the rain out of the Jeep and let the ventilation through, thanks to the huge area for ventilation and the louvers keeping the rain out. So this is a pretty cool idea. I'd recommend it. You can purchase an item like this, but it's extremely expensive. So if you're a tad bit handy, uh, you could always make yourself one of these. Here's what it looks like. It's just a, a louvered vent. You need at least about three quarters of an inch of aluminum extending off the side so it'll fit the window properly. And the back has the mesh. And then you can see along the bottom here, I've got a bit of a, a grooved piece of aluminum and I put duct tape there just to soften the edge. Anyway, that's pretty much it. So if you like the idea, you could do that for yourself. Now let's take a look at our Make Sense feature where we hear from subscribers. And now for subscribers tips. Hey Cheaper Jeeper TV, we do not wish to mount items on the roof of our Jeep when we go overlanding. We use a trailer hitch cargo basket to bring along awkward items like jerry cans. Thought I'd share. Signed, Carrie Loads. Hey Carrie, that's a great idea. Those cargo hitch carriers come in a variety of styles, materials, and shapes. Some are made of aluminum, some are steel, some have ramps, some are larger, some are smaller. Some have even an angle just coming off the back that would help with departure angles or approach angles. There are some that just come straight out and if you're going to put one on your Jeep, I'd recommend you get one that goes up on an angle just so you have a little more clearance on those forestry road washouts and uh, anywhere that you might be crawling over some obstacles. Here's an example of one that comes out of the hitch and goes up on an angle which gives you a lot more ground clearance as you can see. Okay, that's it for this week's Cheaper Jeeper TV. Thank you for watching. Also, thank you and welcome to our new subscribers. Great to have you with us. If you enjoyed the construction of this sleeping camping platform, if you have some suggestions for improvement, 
please put your comments in the comment section below. We'd love to hear from you. Next week, we'll look at the final fit and finish for our platform. So remember to subscribe and then click the bell icon so you'll get an alert when the next episode is released. I'm Dino, your host for Cheaper Jeeper TV, the show that helps you get the most for your money so that you can get the most for your Jeep. Take care.